This video is sponsored by Sketchfab. If you're interested in product photography and you want to make drinks look more realistic, you can use this method to add some condensation. You can also use this to add dew to grass, or you can make Suzanne look sweaty. Here's a summary of what I'll cover. I'll bring in an object that I want to add water droplets to, as well as a separate object to use for geometry nodes. I'll scatter a bunch of points onto the object, turn all of those points into a volume, and then turn the volume into a mesh. I'll talk about scattering and size options, and I'll end with adding some materials. As always, you can download the file that I make in this video from Patreon, where you can also see my videos early, get coupon codes for free products, and download files that I don't share anywhere else. I also donate a portion of the profits to environmental causes each month. Links for everything are in the description. Alright, let's get started. So here we are in Blender. I'm using version 3.2 for this one. Uh, I recommend using 3.1 or later for this. I think 3.0 might be too early, so make sure you're staying up to date. So I'm starting out with this cola can that I downloaded from Sketchfab using the importer add-on. And I just searched for cola can, and it's the one that's called Simple Cola Can right here. I just changed the texture um, so that we didn't have like, you know, Coke logos everywhere. But if you don't want to download something, you could use this on like a default cube or just like a cylinder or whatever, and it should work fine. And if you want to make sure that your dimensions are the same, um, these are the dimensions of the can right here, 1.2 meters tall. So before I get started, I want to say this isn't the only way to add water droplets to your surfaces. Um, people were doing this long before geometry nodes. You could do this with a shader. Um, I know people will also scatter meta balls onto things. So you can try out some of those other options if you're interested in that too. But in this one, we're using geometry nodes. So instead of adding a geometry nodes modifier to this can, I'm going to create a separate object. And I'll talk a little more about why I'm doing that later. But let's just add a plane with shift A, add a plane right here. And now we can go into the Geometry Nodes workspace up here. Um, if you don't see this up here, you can just click the plus and it should be under General right there. So let's go to the Geometry Nodes workspace. Now with the plane selected, you want to click New right here. And that will add this new Geometry Nodes tree as well as the modifier right here. So I don't want to use this input, so we can actually just delete that with X. And I want to reference the geometry of the can, so we can click and drag from the outliner right here. Just click and drag the cola can and just drag it in here. You can see it creates an object info node. So if you don't want to click and drag it, you can just add one of those in with Shift-A, S to search, and just search for object. Um, it's basically the same thing, you just have to, you know, choose your object right here. So next we're going to distribute some points. So Shift-A, S to search, and I'll search for distribute points on faces right here. We can plug the geometry into the mesh and plug the points into the geometry. So now we have this, uh, you know, separate object right here. You can actually move your can away, and I don't like that. So uh, we can change this to relative, and when we do that, it should make it so that when we move the can, all of those points follow it like that. I'm also going to click the magnet up here so that we can snap everything to the grid. A thing to note about this uh, node right here is that the size of your points and how far apart they are from each other is really going to depend on how big the object is. That's why this can, like I said before, is 1.2 meters tall. So this obviously is not a realistic size. This would be like a massive can. But if you make it really small, then you really have to crank the density up or else you don't really see any points appearing. Just something to keep in mind. So next what I want to do is turn all of these points into a volume. So we can just search for points to volume right here. We can drop that in and you see immediately it's just like encased in a cloud. Um, that's because this radius is really big. So we can turn that down pretty small like that. It becomes hard to see. If you want to see more clearly, you can turn the density up, but I don't think we really need to do that because we're just going to turn this back into a mesh by searching for the volume to mesh right here, like that. Now you can see we have a bunch of these like balls that are kind of melding into each other. This is similar to meta balls, but I think it's even more similar to just kind of uh, throwing a remesh modifier like that. Basically, if you were to scatter just a bunch of spheres and then use the remesh modifier in here set to voxel, then it would probably look very similar to this. So obviously this is too big. Um, we don't really want water droplets that are that large. So we have to turn this radius down pretty low. 
um, I would recommend maybe 0 0.02, like that, to start. And you can see these are really low res. So what we have to do is turn the voxel amount up right here. But uh, I want to make sure that we can do that for our volume to mesh too. So let's change this from grid to amount so that they're using, you know, the same method for resolution. And I'm going to match the voxel amount here and in here. So instead of changing them separately, we can change them at the same time. Um, I'll just add in an integer node right here. And I'll change it to 64 and plug it into the voxel amount here and also right here. So now we can just control both of those with uh, this one slider. And I'll just turn that up higher. You can just turn this up until it looks like a decent resolution to you. I believe I set mine to 128. It's still pretty low poly, but we don't want it to get too high or else it, uh, it gets pretty slow. If you want to see how slow it actually is, you can just uh, click this overlays and turn on timings like that. And it will tell you, you know, the total at the very end. So yeah, you turn this up too high and it will just start taking a long time to load. So I usually keep this at 128. Now I want there to be some variation in size. I don't want them all to be the same size. When you turn it up really high, it just starts looking very, um, very uniform. We can actually add a random value into here. So I'm just going to drag and let go like that. Add a random value right here. And you can set the uh, maximum and minimum amount. So we had this before set to 0 0.02. So we'll make that the maximum 0 0.02 right there. And just so uh, the water droplets don't get too small, we can make this something like 0 0.01 for the minimum like that. So now you can see we have some small droplets and some bigger ones. And if this is still too low res, you can just turn this up to something higher, like 256. If the spheres are starting to look strange to you, like if you're noticing kind of like layers, you can mess around with the threshold right here. Um, I usually have it set to 0.5. Um, I feel like it makes things look a little smoother. A thing to keep in mind too is that if you change the density, you're going to have to change the threshold too. So I recommend just leaving the density set to 1 for this. So there's not much else to this, honestly. Like, this is already looking pretty good. Um, you can turn the density up as high as you want right here. And if you turn it up really high, um, you might not like how much they're actually touching. So if you want them, if you want to control how far apart the water droplets are, you can change this from random to Poisson disk right here. Um, and then you want to, you know, change the density back up. I'll turn it up to something pretty high, like 1,000 and you can set the minimum distance right here. So you're going to want the minimum distance to be a pretty small number, um, similar to this, because this is the, the radius right here. So let's try setting it to 0 0.02, like that. So you can see it's a little more spaced apart now, and you can turn the density up really high. Let's turn this up to something like 5,000, and let's turn this up to maybe 0 0.03. Not too many of the water droplets are touching. Some of them are, but I think that's okay. If you check out references of like cans with condensation on them, you'll notice some of them are very separated like this, I think when they're untouched. Um, and there are other ones that are much more kind of uh, random where they're, you know, touching each other and forming into each other and stuff like that. So yeah, play with those values to get the result that you're looking for. Let's take a break to talk about the sponsor, Sketchfab. Sketchfab is an online marketplace where you can buy and sell 3D models. They have more than 3 million models to choose from, and they make looking for them enjoyable by allowing you to view them in your browser, where you can see things like wireframe versions to check out the topology and what the included materials are like. Sketchfab has importer add-ons that make it easy to get models into your scenes. That's how I downloaded the soda can from this video. So if you're interested in buying or selling 3D models, check out Sketchfab. Now let's add a shader to this. So I'm going to do that at the very end. We can add a set material right here. I already have a material for my can. So we can go over here and uh, just on our plane, we want to add a material. It actually doesn't really matter what object you're adding it to as long as the material exists, but we can add it onto our plane and I'll just name it water. And then we can set it over here to water. Now I'll turn the base color all the way white like that. I'll turn the roughness all the way down and I'll turn the transmission all the way up. And that will create kind of like a water texture. But these look kind of like little disco balls because they're not smooth. So before the set material, we can shade it smooth with a set shade smooth node like that. 
and now it should be nice and smooth. I'm going to turn this down to maybe 500. I'll change this to 0 0.02. Now in Eevee, this looks pretty good, but let's take a look at it in Cycles also. So in Cycles, you're going to get a lot more uh, of a realistic look with, you know, refraction and stuff like that. So now I want to show you one of the benefits of, uh, you know, making a separate object for your geometry nodes in this case. So let's just hide this right here and add that same geometry nodes modifier to our can right here. So we can add a modifier geometry nodes and just set it to the one that we made. There's only one right now, so we can set it to that. So as soon as we do this, you'll notice that we have like a little error right here. That's just because um, the object can't be referencing itself. So we can change this to uh, group input and just select the geometry. So let's do that. For us to actually be able to see the can, we're going to have to join it. So grab a join geometry, place it at the end right there, and we can plug it in. So when we plug it in, you'll notice that our texture is no longer there. I think what's happening is it's messing up the UV coordinates that it was using before. So it turns out as long as you add a geometry to instance node at the end right there, then it works fine. But if anyone knows other ways of fixing this, leave a comment below. Let's just uh, control Z to undo a lot of this stuff. So we're back to where we were before. Now let's just uh, get rid of this geometry nodes modifier, turn this one back on. One thing that's also nice about uh, this method is instead of using an object, you can use a collection. So let's just make a new collection over here with C and I'll just add cans in there and we'll add our cola can to that. Now we can delete this object info node right here and drag in the collection cans, plug that in right here. And we'll also change that to relative. Now let's start adding some other cans. We can just shift D to duplicate. And you can see when we do that, now all of these cans have the water droplets on them. Um, and we don't have to add it to each one individually, which is nice. And if you look really closely, you'll notice that um, these all have the same water droplets in the same spots. So if you want that to not be the case, you can just realize this first because it uh, treats collections of objects like uh, instances. So when you add that in, it should um, treat each one separately. And you might just have to play with some of these values to add the, the density and the resolution back in. All right, that's it for this one. Once again, all the project files from my videos can be found on Patreon. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good one.